Welcome back everyone to the Hello World guys. This is another episode of the OpenGL 3D render series and in this video we are going to continue by creating a movement system for our camera because currently our camera is just stationary and we can't really move it so I'm going to go and create a movement system for the camera. So by default I'm going to position the camera at uh, uh, 2 on the z-axis and 0 on the z-axis with its rotation at the default looking uh, forward. So now we are going to implement the method that allows the user to dynamically move the camera. So how are we going to do that? So it is quite obvious that uh, in order to move the camera in various direction we need to actually know where the direction is. So for example if we want to move the camera forward we want to move it forward according to the direction of the camera. For that we do want to know where the camera's forward and up and uh, right and left is. So in order to find that what we'll need to do is currently you can see we calculate these values the forward vector the right vector and the up vector in this uh, get view matrix function we do calculate that. And in the 3D renderer function what we do is we use the get view matrix function to recalculate all of those values so what we must do is we must uh, uh, kind of uh, uh, implement this in a perhaps in a separate function or yeah we'll have to implement that in a separate function that is called for example update uh, update direction vectors and then we'll need to actually store these forward right and up vectors as some private variables and then later on we'll need to use these private variables in uh, like uh, for example by creating getters for the variable so that we can actually access them in our main file and then we'll use those to kind of determine which direction we want to move in so let's get started with that so in here what we are going to do is we are first of all going to create three private variables uh, one called forward one called the right and one called up and these are going to store our uh, you know vectors here so we might want to create a separate function for actually mm, creating those vectors I'm going to first of all go and initialize this to the default values in the constructor so that it does not give an uninitialized uh, warning or something so yeah let's do that and now let's go back under camera.h and what we are going to do here is uh, we are going to create a void uh, another function here that returns nothing actually yeah let's uh, let's do that here we are going to create a function called update direction vectors so which is this all this function is going to do is it's going to set the forward right and up to their correct values depending on the camera's new position and rotation so what we'll do is we'll just go here and uh, implement that and uh, we can just copy the code we had in our get view matrix into the update direction vectors function just like that and uh, that would allow us to access these quite efficiently but uh, we won't we'll actually use our member variables here we'll set our forward to glm colon colon vec3 this and we can actually normalize it directly as well here so we are going to say glm normalize and uh, the, the thing that we want to normalize is going to be a vector which consists of these values that we have calculated in the previous video so that is pretty much all we need to do and of course we want to make sure we use the member variables for right and up as well and do not use the uh, you know other functions so that is pretty awesome and get your matrix is just going to return everything using the member variables that we have got so now what we can do here is uh and that in the 3d renderer we'll need to make sure that we update the reaction vectors or uh, yeah let's actually do that before we do gl clear so that we kind of separate the camera movement from the rendering part uh, to kind of uh, be better so this is going to be the camera stuff that does not depend on rendering and the next is going to be after gl clear is going to be actually rendering stuff here so that would be uh, allow us to make a nice separation uh, this is the rendering part and this is the non rendering part and you might want to create a separate function but uh, for now we don't really need to do that let's uh, not just uh, let's not create a function for now so we are going to create three more functions here one called forward one called right and one called up all these functions are going to do is they are going to return the correct values uh, so that we can use them when we want to handle our movement so you can see the implementation is pretty simple for forward we return forward and similarly for right and up now in our main function we are going to get started with the actual movement code so for this what we will first have to do is we'll, we are going to go up here and define a constant float uh, called speed that we are going to set to 5 by default or let's just set that to 6 for example and uh, yeah we are going to do that and uh, now let's go in here and try to implement the code depending on the keyboard input so here when we are uh, after we have done uh, updating the direction vectors uh, not before after we are done updating the direction vectors what we are going to do is uh, uh, before this we are going to uh, go ahead and uh, well we are going to put a bunch of we want to of course change the uh, position of the camera so what we will do is we will go ahead and uh, for example let's say 
camera dot position plus equal and minus equal will do different stuff but first what we will have to do is we need to find out whether the user is pressing a key or not so we are going to use sf colon colon keyboard colon colon is key pressed which is a function we use in sfml so, uh, different libraries have different functions and you can use those to kind of uh, decide what you want to do so we are going to check for w first to, to move in the forward direction so we are going to say if the w key is pressed then we are going to say camera dot uh, position plus equal camera dot forward uh, which means the actual forward direction of the camera uh, actually the camera needs to be small c so forward direction of the camera multiplied by the speed because the forward is just a direction we want to move it with the speed now i'm going to copy and place paste this four times and we are going to implement it for a s and d all keys uh, here as well and so here we just want to change what we are doing uh, for moving backwards uh, actually let's implement backwards first s f here and we are going to basically subtract the forward and for moving to the left we'll subtract as well because this is the we'll use the right vector here and uh, when it d is pressed we want to move to the right we are going to plus the right vector here and that is pretty much all we need to do and uh, this is going to be frame rate dependent uh, which means it's not really going to work so for that we need to create a clock and kind of measure our time so that we make our game frame rate independent by using the delta time so I'm going to go ahead and cut that clock and paste this here and what we'll do is we'll go ahead and uh, for each other frame we'll say float delta time is equal to clock dot get elapsed time dot uh, as seconds which will give us the time that the clock has spent uh, in seconds so yeah that is pretty much it and we want to do multiply every value by delta time which will make sure that everything is uh, according to the delta time uh, it uh, it will make sure that everything happens the same speed on every computer so that is what we are going to do here and uh, when it runs uh, what you should be able to see is that uh actually that did not work I moved way too fast uh, the only reason that happened was because uh, we actually used get elapsed time here we also need to restart the clock not just to get the elapsed time so we're going to change this to restart and restart automatically returns the uh, elapsed time as well so we don't need to call that separately now if I run this what you can see is that uh, the movement works like a charm and we can kind of press different keys to move around our uh, thing that we have got here and uh, yeah that is working through simple matrix multiplication with points and that's getting our uh, scare to be at the correct point on the screen and of course uh, we can move uh, uh, you know uh, in front of the scare and then it, we won't be able to see it and we can move like we can maximize our screen and it still works like a charm so in order to implement the next thing which is looking we are going to have to create a bunch of variables here so we are going to create a boolean called is first mouse and the reason we need to create these variables is because we want to kind of capture the mouse when the user presses the right mouse button and then the mouse will not move and it won't be visible and we won't will be able to kind of look around and then when the user releases the right mouse button then we'll get everything visible again so for this we'll create a boolean called is first mouse which we'll set to true and uh, we'll also create uh, one more variable here which is going to be uh, I cannot make it a GLM vector because we are dealing with SFML here so we'll create an SFML vector to I which means a vector of integers uh, not one of floats and uh, we are going to call this uh, uh, let's just call this last mouse uh, last mouse position uh, which we are just going to initialize to the default value and uh, after doing that what we can do is uh, we can go ahead and uh, implement our looking functionality down here uh, where we are uh, you know after we are done moving let's implement the looking as well so in here we are basically going to check uh, if the mm, you know key for looking is pressed which is we are going to make it the right mouse button so we are going to say sf colon colon mouse colon colon is button pressed and we are say sf mouse and uh, for the button we'll just say right just right which will check if the right mouse button is pressed uh, if it is pressed then we'll do one thing if it's not pressed we'll do another so first let's start with what happens if it is not pressed well if it's not pressed that means that the uh, next time the user clicks the mouse it's going to be the first time the user has actually uh, you know uh, started looking so we are going to set is first mouse to true and uh, we don't need to uh, we might set the last mouse position we don't really need to do that we are also going to make sure that our mouse is visible so we are going to say window dot uh, set mouse cursor visible and set that to true uh, and uh, by the way we needed to make is first mouse true as well we made it false that's wrong 
so uh, yeah is first mouse that needs to be true so let's change that and uh, when if it the button is pressed which means that uh, we do want to look we are going to add another condition here the first one uh, is going to basically check if uh, uh, well actually let's implement this first is going to check the first mouse condition so if first mouse is pressed then what we'll do is we'll do a different thing compared to when it's not pressed so when we press the mouse for the first time and begin our looking procedure what we are going to do is we are going to set the last mouse position to uh, the SF mouse uh, and we'll get the get position of the mouse and the position that we'll get will pass in our window so that it gets the position relative to the window and not uh, just global position and then what we can do is we can say if the f if we ha it is first mouse so this is the first mouse then what we'll do is we'll set that to false because uh, it was the first mouse so now the next one is not going to be first and we're also going to make the cursor invisible so that it looks like we have locked on after that uh, if it is not uh, you know the first mouse then we need to kind of implement a way of determining how much the mouse has moved and if it has moved then kind of changing the yaw and pitch of the camera accordingly and that is the way we are going to have to do that so in order to do that what we can do is uh, uh, for example let's uh, let's actually go ahead and uh, try to first calculate the offsets um, first of all let's try to get the current mouse position i'm going to create another vector to y sfml vector called mouse position which we are going to set to sf mouse get position window so this is going to be the new mouse position after the user has moved the mouse in the end we are going to reset the position to the last mouse position since we are locked so let's go ahead and say sf colon colon mouse colon colon set position and we are going to give it our uh, last mouse position here and now we need to calculate the offsets uh, here and uh, uh, let's go ahead and implement that so for this we are going to have two variables one is for the x offset and one is for the y offset and it, mm, based on those we'll determine what to do uh, with our pitch and your values so we'll create a, an x offset and set that to mouse position dot x minus the last mouse position dot x and uh, for the y offset we'll do something different we'll actually uh, inverse this the reason is because I prefer to have my y looking in the normal manner if you want to have your y look inverted that is when you move your mouse up the camera goes down then you can write it normally will you have to use y of course here and uh, and if you kind of inverse it in the code like this then uh, uh, when you move your mouse up the position will move up so now we need to determine how to kind of move the camera's rotation according to what the offset that we have received here so in order to do that we'll have to create uh, a new variable here called uh, mouse sensitivity uh, which will represent how much we actually change the yo values when our mouse is moved so we'll create that and uh, set it to 25 by default let's say and uh, what we'll do here is we'll go ahead and say camera dot uh, yaw plus equal and for yaw we'll use our x offset because uh, yeah that's that's uh, what your is so we'll just say x offset multiplied by mouse uh, sensitivity multiplied by the, uh, the the delta time so that it's frame rate independent and uh, for the pitch we'll basically do the similar thing but uh, uh, we'll now use the y offset so that is going to actually move our yaw and pitch correctly and uh, this code is all that we are going to need for an interactive camera so yeah we have pretty much got everything done we have got a movement done and a looking mechanism done so now let's go ahead and uh, test that so as soon as this uh, starts what you should be able to see is that by default my mouse cursor is visible and as soon as I press the right mouse button you can see things kind of start to get a bit insane and uh, uh, it starts to kind of move around in a really weird way the only reason that's happening is because when we are setting our position we are passing the last mouse position but we are not passing our window if we do not pass our window it will set it relative to the screen not relative to the window and uh, we need to pass the window relative after so we are going to pass the window here as well so that it uh, actually sets the position relative to the window so now that we have got that done what we can do is we can just go ahead and run that and uh, you can see that I can kind of move around in this 3d scene and uh, the mouse sensitivity uh, seems a bit too low so I'm going to set that to 35 for example you can of course play around with the values until you find something that uh, you like so now what you should be able to see is that we are able to move around in a fully interactive 3d scene so yeah you can see that I can I've got a fully interactive camera and I can move around and view this uh, uh, thing that we have got from different angles and it all is pretty awesome so we have got pretty much uh, uh, we got a plain scare thing in a 3d world done 
so yeah that is pretty much it for this video and uh, you can kind of see how we unleash the full potential of our 3d uh, you know matrix based camera system so yeah i'll see you in the next video make sure to like and subscribe and stay tuned for that and share this video with other people as well and bye